Hello and welcome to a Geodic tutorial. My name is Janine Hilden, Application Engineer at Math to Market, and I will show you in the following video how to model and charge a virtual battery in Geodict. We will use a predefined Geo app Grand Geo to generate realistic microstructures of electrodes. From this anode and cathode, we will build a battery and perform a charging simulation on this battery with Battery Dict. First of all, we need to generate realistic microstructures of an anode and a cathode. For that, we will use predefined Geo apps, which we can find under Geo app, Grain Geo. In the pull down menu, we find two electrode Geo apps. One creates an anode, and the other creates a cathode. We will start with the anode. Clicking on Edit opens the Anode Parameters dialog. Here we can set the active materials, the size of the anode, and the solid volume percentage for the active material and binding. We want to create a graphite anode in this tutorial, so we leave the selection for the active materials as they are. For the volume, we also stay with the 100 by 100 by 100 voxels. The solid volume percentage for the graphite we change to 65%. The binder solid water percentage we decreased to 4.5%. These are typical values for graphite anodes. In the voxel length mode we set a manual, as we want to control the resolution for the microstructure. We change the voxel length to 500 nanometer, which is a typical resolution for a CT scan. We click OK and run. The structure generation takes about one minute. The graphite anode is shown in 2D view. You can also change here to 3D and watch our structure from all sides. We see the nice graphite flakes in red and the carbon black and binder face in between in green. As we can see in the statistics tab, we have a porosity of nearly 30%. Now we store this anode structure on our hard drive. Select File, Save Structure as, and let's call it just AnnoGDT. By default, it is saved to our current project folder. Now, we will do the same for the cathode side. Select the ElectroGeo cathode app from the pull down menu and click Edit. We want to generate an NMC cathode. Thus, we select NMC for the active material 1 and set the second active material to none. Use the same volume size as for the anode. For the NMC, we choose a solid volume percentage of 60% and for the binder, we select 10%. These are typical values for NMC cathodes. The resolution we again set to manual and then to 500 nanometer. Click OK and run. After about two minutes, the generation is finished and we can watch our NMC cathode from all sides. It consists of three shaped NMC grains visualized in red and a carbon black and binder face in between. The porosity of the cathode is also about 30%. Now we can use these electrode microstructures to build a virtual battery. Therefore, we will use the battery dict module, which we can find in the predict battery dict. Here, we choose design battery to assemble the virtual battery. Click edit to define the battery parameters. Geodict can of course also design batteries from segmented 3D scans, but we will use the digital electrodes we generated with Geodict before. Therefore, on the anode side, we load the anode structure we created. Click browse and choose the anode GDT file. For the cathode, we select Use Current Structure, since the cathode is still loaded in Geodict. Here, we could also change the thickness of the separator, but we stay with the three voxels here, which is 1.5 micrometer. Additionally, the battery designer will also add current collectors on the anode and the cathode side. Next, we will check the materials of our electrodes, starting in the anode tab. Electrolyte for the pore space is fine. Also, graphite for the grains is right, but the anode ID2, which is the binder phase, we change to PVDF binder and carbon black. 
Below, we find a previous slice of our anode to check which material at ease belongs to which phase. Here, graphite in red, electrolyte in white, and binder in green. The same we will do in the cathode tab. Electrolyte for the pore space and NMC for the active material is fine. But for cathode ID2, we select PVDF, binder, and carbon black. All parameters are set, so we click OK and run the battery designer. Then we see our result viewer. Every time after the simulation, the corresponding result file is opened in this result viewer. The design battery result file gives an overview of the different volumes and volume fractions for all materials in the battery. For example, look at the anode active material 1, which is graphite, as we remember from the design battery dialog before. It has a volume of 81,000 cubic micrometer, which is a volume fraction of 31% in this battery. The NMC also has a volume fraction of nearly 30%. As we only have one active material in the anode and the cathode, respectively, the volumes for the other active materials in this table are zero. In the visualization area of Geodic, now the battery is displayed. The colors for graphite, NMC and binder have changed, as each material in the battery got its own material ID. The selected materials are also present in our material database, which we can find by clicking this icon in the toolbar. In the database, we can view our constituent materials and their properties and change them if needed. To add a material or change the properties of a material already present in the database, click Edit Material Database. For example, select Graphite and view the detailed information about all given properties on the right. For example, the density of the graphite, several mechanical properties, and of course, electrochemical properties. As we want to run a charging simulation on our battery structure, the electrochemistry tab, of course, is the most important for now. Here we can choose the role for the graphite in the battery, which is anode active material. By clicking Edit Material, we can view the electrical parameters set for this material. For example, the maximum lithium concentration, the ionic fusion constant, the butler former rate, and the OCV function of the material. If needed, these properties can be changed any time or can be set for new materials. We do not want to change anything for our materials, so we just close the database dialogs. Before performing a full charging simulation, we analyze the connectivity of our battery structure. For that, we select Analyze Battery and click Edit to view the parameters. We do not change any settings here. Because the battery is not periodic, symmetric boundary conditions are fine. In this example, we choose the CBD phase not to be porous. However, our electrochemical simulation is able to treat the CBD phase as being porous if needed. Simply click OK and run. Geodict again produces a result file and opens it in the result viewer. Detailed information about the microstructure of the battery is given. As connected active material is important for the transport properties, the battery will perform much better if there are no large amounts of unconnected material. As we can see, the volume fractions of unconnected material are very small for all materials, no matter if we consider the complete battery or only one of the electrodes. Additionally, we get again an overview of the volumes for the battery and also specific for the anode and the cathode. Now that we have created our battery and checked that we don't have too much unconnected active materials, we can move on to perform a charging simulation. Again, we have to define simulation settings. The constituent materials tab shows us again the setup of the battery. The pore phase is filled with electrolyte and we have the anode current collector the anode active material graphite, the anode carbon black and binder phase, the separator, the cathode active material NMC, the cathode binder phase, and the cathode current collector. We do not need to change any settings for the constituent materials. Next, we take a look at the experiment parameters. We will charge the battery with a charge rate of 1C. Instead of the charge rate, we could also specify a current density or current. We could also use the cutoff voltage, which changes the charging mode from constant current to constant voltage. But we leave the box unchecked. 
Then we can define the initial cell state of charge and the final cell state of charge. We will use the predefined values and charge the battery from 20% to 70% state of charge. We move on to the solver tab. The numerical solver we will use to simulate the charging is our Lear solver. The parallelization by default is set to the maximum available number of processes. Since I am running the simulation on my laptop, the maximum number of processes is 8, as the laptop has 8 cores. Under the Equations tab, have a look at the equations the solver will solve when running the simulation. So now, we click OK and hit Charge to start the charging simulation. On my laptop, the simulation needed about 60 minutes. Thus, for this video, I will jump immediately to the results. After the simulation is done, the result view is opened again and in the report, the first thing to find is a short report about the simulation. For example, the applied current and the maximum capacity of the battery cell. We find information about the time-dependent charge curve and some details about the anode and the cathode site regarding capacity and unconnected material. Additional to the results to be found in the report, there are some result plots. For example, you can have a look at the charging curve where we can see the cell potential over the cell state of charge. But we can also choose between different view options, for example the transfer charge over time or the electrode state of charge over the cell state of charge. The second plot tab shows the ion concentration as a slice average over the position and through direction for different cell states of charge. We can also view the potential of the battery for different states of charge for the solid materials as well as for the electrolyte. And we get a plot for the battery geometry regarding the volume fractions for the electrolyte and the active material. We can also visualize the results in 3D. Therefore, we move to the data visualization tab and select the field for 70% cell state of charge. Then simply click load to load the results to the user interface. Here we can choose which results we want to visualize. We have fields for the potential, the current density, the lithium ion concentration and the diffusion flux. Since I only want to visualize the fields concentration and diffusion flux, I click uncheck all and check again diffusion flux and concentration and click OK. Now we can watch the volume field on 3D. We can still see our structure. To only visualize the volume field, we deactivate the structure with this little checkbox above of the visualization area. Now we only see the results for the diffusion flux. Let's move to the volume field tab. Here we can choose for which material at least the results should be shown. As of course the diffusion flux in the solids is zero, we are not interested in the results here. So we deselect the checkboxes for the solid materials. 1, 2, 6, 7, 8, 12, and 13. Now we only see the results computed for the pore space. We can also choose which result fields to visualize with the pull-down menu for color. Let's visualize the iron concentration. The concentration is only interesting in the active materials, so disable the visibility for the pore space and activate it for graphite and NMC again. As expected, we see that the iron concentration in the cathode side is already very low, while the iron concentration in the anode side is much higher. In the end, I want to show you another nice visualization feature. In the result viewer, we have the Create Videos tab, where we can create a great video showing the charging of our battery with only one click. Simply click Create Video. The video is created in about 2 to 3 minutes. When the video generation is finished, the video is stored as an MP4 in the result folder and also can be played simply from the result viewer by clicking Play Video. In this video, I show to you how you can easily design a virtual battery and predict the performance for this battery in Geodict. And if you found this tutorial helpful, please check out our Math Market channel for more Geodict videos. Goodbye!